Okay, so this video has been a long time coming. Um, it is a look at Ironman Portugal, um, which is the race that I won. I still, still can't believe it. Um, it was my second Ironman, my first being Copenhagen in 2019. And we'd entered it in 2020 and everything got cancelled. Um, so it's been a long time coming. I went into it with some pretty big goals and I achieved them, um, which is crazy. So I'm going to let you watch, um, enjoy. We had some fantastic help from Robbie and Yaz, two of our very good friends out there because Matt was racing as well. Um, and afterwards, I'm going to do a little bit of a recap and a look at what my goals are for next year. Um, but I'm sure I'll go into them in a bit more detail over the coming videos, but enjoy. So Portugal, what a race. I think I had, I didn't have, I definitely didn't have the ideal uh, um, lead in. Uh, I mentally, I kind of checked out about three weeks before. I was so ready for the race to be done. It's been a really long two years and so much pressure with COVID and losing a job and moving house twice um, that you know, I was just, I wanted my A race to be done, to go well, and then to just reset and move on. Um, and I had a chat to a couple of people a few weeks before, and they reassured me that I was okay. So I'd gone into it not panicking that I was <laughs> felt like I was ready for it to be done, um, but actually very, very relaxed, which was great because the week of the race was not ideal at all. Um, we got there, we got there fine. It was the first time traveling since COVID, which was stressful enough. Um, then add in the bikes and everything. It was just a lot going on. But when we came to put the bikes together, my back wheel wasn't holding air. Uh, so we couldn't go for the spin that we'd planned to. Um, we did a little bit of running, but I'm quite keen to not do too much running the week of a race because you're already doing a marathon. So... For me, I don't need to do that much. Um, and after that first day or second day that we arrived, the wind massively pick picked up um, and I had a disc wheel on, um, or at least a disc on my wheel. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that later. So, and, and the road we were staying on was busy. So it was just, it was not, it was not ideal um, to get out and enjoy a ride. It was just a stressful ride. So we did a bike check and that was it. Um, we got in the water, we did some swimming, but other than that, it was a really, really chilled week in, enjoying a bit of sunshine um, and just getting ready for getting ready for the big race. Um, the race itself <laughs> still feels really surreal, actually. The swim, I cried before we started. So it was a late race start because it's quite late in the season um, and the sun didn't rise until 7.50 so that's when we started the race and they were playing the music there were so many people there were so many people at the start so you start in like a little bay and all of the street next to it was just like five deep of people screaming and cheering all the people behind all of the athletes um and I just got <laughs> really overwhelmed um I think I'd worked up to like sixth row uh, I probably could have, I should have gone in the front row because then I would have found it much easier to be in the front group because I had a bit of time to make up. Um, but I got into the front pack on the swim and stuck with them to the end. I think there were two guys off the front, but the rest of us were just in this pack. Um, we got a little bit lost coming into the finish because the boys disappeared and there were just loads of boats. Um, and there was some, it wasn't wavy, but there were some rolling waves, so it was quite hard to sight the boys. Um, but... We think a long swim, it was a great swim. The water was fantastic. There were no sharks uh, and swimming into sunrise was something that I don't think I'm ever gonna forget. Um, transition was a long transition. I think it was like a 700 meter run, but uphill, which really gets your heart rate up after swimming. Um, and so controlling that coming into T1 was quite hard. But as soon as I got out onto the bike, I just completely relaxed. And I was like, yeah, okay, this is where I'm happy. Um, and enjoyed it. I overtook the woman in front. So I was the fastest woman in the water, but there was a woman that was faster. So she started before me, came out slightly before me and was quicker in transition. 
um, which was fine. I wasn't rushing my transitions, but I overtook her, I think like 20 minutes into the bike. And I knew that she was the only one ahead because they'd announced it. Um, so I just relaxed, enjoyed it, tried not to put out too much power and failed miserably um, because the first bit was up a hill and I got really excited. But the course was amazing. Um, I'm glad I didn't cycle it before because I probably would have been more worried going into the race. It was very technical, the first bit. So we were climbing for about 30 kilometres and it got quite steep towards the end. 17% on a TT bike at the end of a 15 kilometre climb is pretty savage, I won't lie to you. Um, but we got up and then coming back down, it was quite twisty. So I... Hadn't, I wasn't that comfortable because I'm still on rim brakes on my TT bike, but all of my other bikes are disc brakes. So it just handles a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, there needs to be more practice from me on that or I just take the hit and buy a new bike. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, the course was fantastic. Um, I, I'm, again, really, really pleased. The power was higher than I'd intended it to be and it didn't come to bite me in the bum too much. Um, but I thought, thought it was going to, um, uh, my power was two, two, three normalized. I was aiming for two fifteen, Um, so I thought I was going to really suffer on the run and my first seven K on the run was really strong. Oh, actually I fell off my bike coming into transition too. I just feel I need to mention that because I don't have my life together at all. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd have seen the video, um, it's hilarious. It was really funny at the time. And I was literally just being announced as the first woman and I completely stack it and I'm lying on the floor, uh, which is great. <laughs> Thankfully my bike wasn't damaged. Um, but yeah, the bike, the bike was, the bike was great. The run, I started off very strong. Um, and I think much stronger than I had in Copenhagen, which is great. And I just didn't want to slow myself down because it felt really smooth. And I think that I'm, I take a lot of confidence from that first bit of the run that I can put together a first 7K that feels like that. Um, I would like to be able to do that for the whole run. So that's the, that's the next aim. Um, I'd gone in not thinking I would be able to run much faster than a 3.45 and I ran a 3.37, knowing that I was in the lead as well. So... It was definitely conservative. I came off the bike with like 25 minutes, I think. So I just wanted to make sure that I got to the end safely. Um, and it was a very hot day. There were some quite big drags on the run. So it was very easy to get dehydrated and overheat because the biggest climb was in direct sunlight. So it really, really sapped you. Um, but yeah, just a brilliant race that I can't believe happened. Um, it was the best race I could have put together on the day. But if I put together that race next year, I'll be disappointed. And here is why. Number one, I need to get out on the front of the swim. I am by far the strongest swimmer. So I just need to back myself and back myself to hold on to some even faster feet. Um, especially in Kona, woohoo, qualified. Uh, it's likely that I'm gonna be at the top end of the age group swimmers. So I need to make sure I'm at the front. Um, but I think Kona is slightly different. Regardless, I need to put myself at the front. I need to back myself a bit more. Bike, I need to be more aero. So we're going to do a lot of work over that on the winter. Um, it will be dropping my head. It might be investing in a new helmet. Um, I'm gonna. I've got two options for a bike fit, um, and I'm gonna try and work with some quite cool people just to dial that in because my power is there and now I just need to use it properly um, and number three the biggest one is sorting out my run I've come on so much my first marathon was four hours 24 my second was 337 I want to run what was my statement run a three hour 15 marathon in Kona um I think I could do it uh I only ate one gel in the marathon um at Portugal I was really worried about my stomach because it was hot um and I just I didn't have access to the right gels so I need to take my own gels I'm going to put in another block of work um just getting confident because I, I genuinely think I am actually capable of doing it I just need to be confident in myself so yeah they're the next focuses for each of the bit back myself basically across all three um 
do a bit more of a focus on the run and get aero on the bike and nutrition kind of spans across all of that. The 100 mile TT I did last year really helped with nutrition on the bike this year. Um, so I, well, actually, no, I did it in July and then October. Um, I fueled really, really well on the bike. And I think that's why I was able to get through the marathon pretty well without having the fuel that I needed to. Um, so I'm actually very excited to see what I could do when I do have the fuel that I need to, because I know that I can run on gels. I just need to make sure I have the right ones. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, Kona's the big one next year. I've got an awesome race calendar leading up to it. That's just, it's really varied and there's lots going on. So I'm very excited about it. Um, and I will keep you guys updated and bring you along for the ride. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you want to see a bit more of, and I'll catch you soon.